bank regulations like Dodd-Frank could plant the seeds of another financial crisis. And joining us right now, we welcome back former FDIC chair, Sheila Bear. Sheila, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. You're not against the whole bill. I mean, you no. you know, the, the, the impact it'll have on small and regional banks, you're in favor of. But, it, but you're worried about what it does for the big guys, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a pretty widespread consensus that uh, we may have overshot with this, the community banks and the smaller regionals, and they were not they were not really drivers of the crisis. Existing regulatory supervisory tools uh, are sufficient, but of course, you know, the big banks have to get their own little pound of flesh in the bill, and so inserted uh, in this uh, this otherwise good bill is Section 402 which uh, puts us on a very slippery slope toward a serious weakening of bank capital requirements for the very largest systemic institutions. And that is very short-sighted because in times of economic growth and in good times, we want banks to be building their capital buffers so that when we get into a downturn, they can keep lending. Uh, right. But now what we're doing is, is when the times are good and, and growth is good and they're profitable and they just got a big tax cut, we're letting them reduce their capital too. It's, it's really, it really makes no sense whatsoever. And, you know, today, actually, we're just about nine years to the day of when the yes. market bottomed. The S&P was down at 666 uh, there. We're looking at it at 2,700, right. of course. Right. Um, so there's, as you mentioned, a couple elements of, of this bill. One would raise the systemically important institution for banks all the way up to $250 billion. Right. Right. Um, there's also that vocal rule exemption for the smaller ones we mentioned, free credit freezes for consumers. So there's something in there, too. Um, right. Do you think overall the net effect of this will be appropriate in terms of dialing back the overregulation, or do you think that uh, your concerns about capital uh, right. still prevail? Well, by far the, the, the most objectionable provision from my point of view is Section 402, which weakens big bank uh, capital standards. In terms of increasing the threshold, I know a lot of people are concerned about that. So long as they clearly preserve pre-existing supervisory authorities, I don't really have a problem with eliminating the automatic trigger for systemic uh, status, raising that to 250 billion, so long as there, we preserve the authorities that that, that regulators already have uh, to make sure banks are operated in a safe and sound manner. So I think the tools are there, uh, so long as we clearly preserve them in the in the uh, the legislation, assuming it becomes law. So yes, I, I'm much less concerned about that than I am about this uh, provision of, of capital uh, because. You know, we're doing exactly, you mentioned, you know, so we're, we're going on the 10th anniversary of the crisis. And prior to the crisis, we did exactly what we're doing now. We lowered bank capital standards when growth was very robust, fueled by a lot of unaffordable mortgage lending. And we right. reduced bank capital. And then they had no capital. The downturn came. They were suffering losses. They were teetering on the edge. Uh, the taxpayers had to bail them out. We're going down that same uh, path again, and it's, it's very frustrating for someone like me who lived through the crisis and thought we'd learned better lessons. Right. right. Now, uh, you're concerned about other areas as well in, in the uh, debt area. Uh, credit card debt, which yes. continues to right, grow yeah. uh, again, and the subprime auto loans we've been hearing so much about the last few years. But what can you do about that? What should be yeah. done about that, do you think? Well, uh First of all, I think more structural reforms to our economy, so we're less reliant on debt. Uh, you know, real wage growth has still struggled, and people borrow uh, more than they otherwise would if we had better real wage growth. And so I think that's that's a large discussion to have, and I think there are other tax policies and other changes that can be made, sensible infrastructure uh, to get real wages up. But, but that's, a, that's a big part of it. But we have, you know, we've just uh, devolved into this rampant short-termism, and again, people are borrowing to sustain and increase their, their standard of living as opposed to getting real wage increases. So I think that is the core problem, what's driving debt. And it's not sustainable. If your economic growth, your consumer spending is being driven by debt, there's only so much they can borrow, then they'll stop, and then you have a very, very deep recession, which is exactly, again, what we had in 2008 and 2009. If you have been curious how to make the money when markets fall, uh, please visit marketcrash.money and get some additional information. Specifically, I have compiled some uh, interesting reasons why stock market crash 2010 is a definite possibility, why we could be going for another Bitcoin crash, and more importantly, how to not let the market crash or the Bitcoin crash take advantage of you. Find out how to profit. If you're a new trader or an experienced trader, but you're looking for new ideas, new ways, how to take advantage of the market
fall because quite honestly markets do fall much much faster than they go up so it represents as a, for a trader a great opportunity to profit on the opposite direction of the market in a much shorter time frame and oftentimes maximize much bigger return so if interested in knowing the ways how I trade weekly options for huge profits as much as 3800 percent to 5000 percent on certain days um, get in touch with me uh, visit this link right here how to profit read some information and schedule your consultation I'll be glad to help out and get somebody on the right track and show you some of my profitable ideas uh, and share some experience which I've accumulated over the last 30 years trading weekly options thanks for watching I hope this was helpful. We'll see you soon.